I'm just going to give us some questions about personas because you're in-house expert on personas. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so personas are an ideal representation of your customers. So they're not all your customers, so they have to be the ideal, so the ideal customer that you want to attract to your business. So they don't actually exist. So basically you want to use personas to figure out how to talk to your audience. Um, it really helps when you write content to know who you're talking to, so it helps you focus on what you're saying. It helps the message as well be more focused so you're not talking to everyone, you're talking to specific people who have specific um, things that you know they want to know, they have their specific problems and stuff like that. So it really helps you to focus who you're talking to and make sure that your message is gonna like resonate with these people. So um, on top of having a good message to your audience, uh, using personas can also help with the content strategy. So you do an audit of your content and then you can figure out the content, like which bit of content go with which persona. So you might have different types of personas and so basically you're gonna associate specific bits of content with specific personas and this helps you when you audit your content to see what you've got and what you're missing so you can see gaps. Maybe you've got, I don't know, a persona for someone in IT but actually you don't have any content talking to them so you can say, oh actually I really need to do some content because we're not talking to these people at all, we're not helping them solve their problem. So it kind of fits into your strategy who you're talking to, do you have the content for it, do you need to create it or improve it. When you build your personas, a lot of people just do demographics, um, which are, they are important and they can help you have a picture of the person. So you'll have their age, where they live, uh, sometimes where they shop, so if they shop at Waitrose or Sainsbury's they'll be like a different type of person, um, like a lot of marketing uh, marketers will like do what type of car they drive and stuff because it kind of says something about people, uh, their gender, uh, where they work, so what like what's their um, role, um, how much they earn as well, that can be quite useful information to know. Uh, where they go online, so that's really useful to know, so which social media network do they go on, what websites do they go on, um, what news do they read, so they read newspapers as well, whether online or offline, that can be all quite useful to have like a picture of who that person is, but that alone doesn't really tell you much about how to talk to them. So you can have an idea of like, yeah, okay, this is this type of person, so they'll probably react better to this. Uh, they hang out on these places on the internet so I can reach them there, which is really useful. That's a very important thing to have um, about your persona, like their challenge. And that is a framework that's called jobs to be done. So basically they have a job to be done, to be fulfilled by someone. So they have a problem and you're going to be the person who's going to fix that problem for them. So let's say if I work in marketing, so if I'm a marketing, um, a digital marketing agency, the persona might be, okay, I'm like when I'm looking in Google Analytics, I'm struggling to find any valuable insights. So I need you to tell me, like to look at the data and tell me what the insights are so that I can then, um, I don't know, like identify which channels to spend my marketing budget on. So that's an example of the jobs to be done framework is that the job is I can't figure out Google Analytics. So I'm going to ask you to fulfill that job for me and so the digital marketing agency is going to look at like offer the services basically to fulfill that job and help them. And so looking at the jobs to be done is a much better way 
to look at personas because you can actually talk about the triggers and the motivations of people and so their motivation is to fix their problem, to find a solution to their problem. So it's much more efficient than knowing, oh yeah, they're 30 year old, years old, they live in London and they work at that and they earn that much money. It can be useful, but on its own, it's not enough. So you need to know actual, like the actual problems of these people so that you can help them. Sometimes it can be really daunting to be like, okay, great, like create a persona, but where do I find this information? So you can have a lot of like, areas you can find it so if you've got a CRM for example uh, you could look in the data in there so you can speak with your salespeople uh, or even your customer service as well because they'll be talking to you know your customers quite a lot so if you want to like find the data about like their demographics and stuff like that you might already have it in your CRM you can look in Google Analytics as well but be careful with that because it's just users so it might not be customers so what you really want is data from customers um, if you don't really have that data you could also create a survey so survey your customers to find out a bit more information about who they are uh, regarding the jobs to be done that can be a bit the more daunting one because oh, how do I know people's problems just talk to them <laughs> you literally just need to interview them so usually what you can do is just like if you're more a b2b or a service um, organization you can interview usually 10 customers and that should be fine so you have to make sure you select like 10 of your best customers so the customers that you want so don't select the ones that always talk to your customer service and not really happy or they don't really understand what you do like really find the people who get what you do they've been using your services or products for a little while so um, make sure that you talk to people who have been a customer for like not too long because they'll need to remember what like what it was like when they were searching for a solution to their problem so you don't want like a year or two years or three years ago because no one's going to remember what it was like so yeah so choose your ideal customer and talk to them and ask them questions about how it was when they were looking for a solution to their problem don't ask them for their opinion and don't directly ask them why you chose us just because the human mind is always trying to rationalize choices, but they actually might not know why. So what you need to do is just build like a timeline of what happened. So ask questions like what happened when, you know, this was like when you were searching for like a solution to your problem, etc. Um, and then once you've got this timeline with these 10 customers, you can build like highlight triggers and highlight patterns and then you can have like what the jobs to be done of your personas are so you can highlight what these people's problems are and what brings them to you basically.